I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and I want you to really think hard about your answers. What's the point in the equilibrium constant? What does that number actually tell us? What's the difference between a large equilibrium constant and a small equilibrium constant? Pause the video and see if you can come up with a solid answer. I've been tutoring chemistry full time for a few years now and not one of my students has been able to give me a confident answer to these questions. For some reason, it's never properly explained at school. Maybe it's the same for you. Perhaps you can use equilibrium constants in a load of multi-step calculations without any issues whatsoever, but have never really thought about the actual significance of that number. In this video, I'll put equilibrium constants into context in a way that you might not have heard before. Let's quickly recap what an equilibrium constant is, just so we're all on the same page here. First of all, a dynamic equilibrium is set up when you put a reversible reaction into a closed system, or a system where no substances can get in or out. Because the reaction is reversible, our reaction mixture will always contain some reactants and some products. If it's mostly reactants in our reaction mixture, we say that the equilibrium position is to the left. And if it's mostly products, we say that the equilibrium position is to the right. I can go into the fundamentals of equilibrium more in another video. But for now, let's say we have a reaction where substance A plus substance B react reversibly to give us substance C, all under aqueous conditions. The equilibrium constant for this reaction is given the symbol K and is calculated using the following equation. K equals the concentration of the products of the reaction as it's written, divided by the concentration of the reactants. Since this particular rate constant uses concentrations, we label it as Kc, where the C stands for concentration. A specific example of this is the equilibrium constant for the dissociation of a weak acid. For the equilibrium that's set up when ethanoic acid dissociates, Kc would be calculated by the concentration of ethanoate ions, multiplied by the concentration of H plus ions, divided by the concentration of ethanoic acid. This type of equilibrium constant, involving the dissociation of a weak acid, is useful in a variety of calculations. So, it has its own name, Ka, where the A stands for acid. Another specific example of Kc is for the equilibrium that is set up when water dissociates into its ions. Here, the equilibrium constant would be calculated by the concentration of H plus ions, multiplied by the concentration of OH minus ions, divided by the concentration of water. In this case, the concentration of water is in huge excess compared to the concentrations of the ions, so it's effectively a constant and can be ignored in the equation. So the equilibrium constant is calculated like this. This type of equilibrium constant, involving the dissociation of water, is also useful in a variety of calculations. So it has its own name, Kw, where the W stands for water. If an equilibrium was set up in the gas phase, the equilibrium constant will be calculated in a slightly different way. We don't normally define a concentration for a gas, Instead, we use pressure. So, for this equilibrium, the equilibrium constant is calculated using this equation. K equals the partial pressure of the products of the reaction as it's written over the partial pressure of the reactants. The partial pressure of a gas is the pressure that that one gas would exert if it was the only gas in the container. We calculate the partial pressure by multiplying the total pressure by the mole fraction of that gas. The mole fraction is just the number of moles of that gas divided by the total moles of gas. Since this particular rate constant uses partial pressures, we label it as Kp, where the P stands for pressure. Okay, so 
Back to the original questions. What's the point in the equilibrium constant? What does that number actually tell us? What's the difference between a large equilibrium constant and a small equilibrium constant? As we've seen, there are several types of equilibrium constant, but they're all calculated by putting the amounts of the products over the amounts of the reactants. So, if the position of the equilibrium is towards the right, we'll have a lot of product molecules in our reaction mixture and few reactant molecules. This means that the top of this fraction will be a big number and the bottom will be a small number. So the value of the equilibrium constant will be big. If the position of the equilibrium is towards the left, we'll have a lot of reactant molecules in our reaction mixture and few product molecules. This means that the top of this fraction will be a small number and the bottom will be a big number. So the value of the equilibrium constant will be small. So the equilibrium constant is a quantification of the position of the equilibrium. In other words, it's a number which tells us where the equilibrium position is. The bigger the value of the equilibrium constant, the more the equilibrium position lies to the right. The smaller the value of the equilibrium constant, the more the equilibrium position lies to the left. For some reason, this is never explained properly at school. So I hope this idea has helped to put equilibrium constants into context for you and will make things clearer going forwards. Please consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments if you have any questions.